Good afternoon, students. So this is topic 13, part three. We're going to be talking about immune disorders, and we're going to be focusing on AIDS and HIV in this particular topic. I will try to keep this one short and really focus on the essentials. As usual, there is more information in the course notes and in the textbook. Do focus on what I am talking about in the lectures. All right, enjoy. Okay, so we are going to be talking about immune system disorders. And when we're talking about immune system disorders, we're really talking about two things, hypersensitivities and immunodeficiencies. So what are hypersensitivities? Hypersensitivities are overreactions of the immune system. When the immune system is doing something when it should not be, so it's uh, overreacting. Uh, this includes things like allergies and autoimmune diseases. There are actually four types of uh, immune system hypersensitivities, and um, they all involve different parts of the immune system in terms of, you know, whether it's B cells or T cells or, or IgE molecules overreacting. I don't expect you to know the differences between the types. Just know that the examples I'm presenting you with are referring to immune hypersensitivities. We'll also be talking about immunodeficiencies. Uh, mostly we'll be talking about HIV and AIDS. So the first type of hypersensitivity that we want to discuss are allergies. I'm sure all of you, in some form or another, whether it's you personally or somebody you know, has or does suffer from various allergic diseases. Allergic diseases include uh, all sorts of allergies, food allergies, asthma, eczema, all of those are considered allergic diseases. And these diseases can be localized, so maybe just a patch of skin, or they can be systemic and life-threatening. And there are many, many different types of allergies. Notice uh, allergies here, it talks about histamines here. Uh, so these histamines are causing inflammation, and so that's really what an allergy is. It's an inflammation, like I said, it could be localized or it could be systemic. So term for you is this one here, allergen. So an allergen is a uh, basically what the body is reacting to. This is the antigen in the case of an allergy. So there are many, many types of allergies. Like I said, asthma and eczema diseases are considered allergic diseases. People have allergies to a variety of things. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with some of these. You can see we've got skin allergies, ingestion allergies, injection inhalation allergies. And uh, if you want to learn more about these, I'm sure you can spend a little bit of time on Google reading about them. We're not going to go into these in any depth whatsoever. So how do allergies work? Uh, for allergies, we have to be exposed to something before we can become allergic to this. The research is very clear on this. For example, places in the world that don't have access to peanuts or peanut butter have no peanut allergies. Uh, so once we're exposed to something, so this could be peanut powder to an infant, this could be pollen while you're growing up as a child, uh, it can be recognized by these IgE antibodies. Remember we talked about these antibodies? These are antibodies that are normally activated by parasitic worms and unfortunately sometimes we don't get exposed to parasitic worms so these antibodies don't have much to do. So notice they're being activated and they're binding to this uh, this B cell and now this B cell is sensitive, sensitized and activated. So here's a secondary response, here's our allergen and it is being bound by these antibodies and then the cell releases histamines. When we have histamines released, this leads to all sorts of symptoms. So sneezing and runny nose, if this could be watery eyes, respiratory. Uh, allergens tend to have these kind of symptoms. Uh, the skin is itching. Sometimes people have trouble breathing or hives, and some allergies can be, of course, uh, life-threatening. So how do we deal with allergies? We can use antihistamines. So if you take a look, this is showing our cells and those histamines are uh, basically chemical messengers that are telling those uh, tissues to do various things. We talked about histamines and their role in inflammation, where uh, they're allowing uh, blood flow to increase and all sorts of other things which lead to inflammation. So we can take antihistamines. Maybe you're familiar with some of these products. Benadryl is an old one. Claritin, Allegra are newer ones. Uh, there's a quite a variety of antihistamines out there. So these are a little bit better at preventing allergies as opposed to alleviating the symptoms. And they do this by blocking histamines. So you can see here's after the drug, 
Here's the antihistamines here and here. They're blocking the receptors so the histamines can't actually get in there and uh, cause inflammation. So I'm sure you're wondering how allergies are caused. We are not really going to go into this in much detail. Uh, we just don't have time this semester and uh, it will not be on the exam. But you can see I have some potential causes. There's clearly some genetics behind allergies uh, that tend to run in families. You do have to be sensitized. Like I said, you do have to be exposed to something. doesn't mean eating it. You could be exposed to the skin, which seems to be the source of a lot of peanut allergies. There's also the hygiene hypothesis. This is referring to the fact that we don't have a lot of parasitic diseases in Canada, so our immune systems are looking for something to do. And then, of course, there are all sorts of other environmental factors that may be causing us issues. Think about all the chemicals we are exposed to in our lives, plastics and otherwise, uh, that we have no idea how they are uh, affecting our health. So I want to talk about another type of hypersensitivity called cytotoxic hypersensitivity. So this is where it says uh, the immune system is recognizing something as non-self and starts destroying those cells. So, for example, you may have heard that if you get uh, the wrong blood type in a transfusion, this is very bad for you. You can see here's the example here. Somebody gets a blood transfusion. Here's the red blood cell here. And it's being recognized by the immune system. It's being destroyed by phagocytosis. You get this done to a large degree, and this can be fatal, of course. There are other diseases that fall into this category, hemolytic disease of the newborn, hemolytic anemia. Uh, we're not really going to focus on these in any detail. Type 3 hypersensitivities are called immune complex mediated. So you can see it's talking about immune complexes. So these are antibody antigen complexes. They become trapped, and when they become trapped, this leads to inflammation, which leads to damage of neighboring tissues. The most common type of this is rheumatoid arthritis. You can see on the right here, here's somebody with a normal x ray, and their hand looks nice and healthy. Someone with rheumatoid arthritis, you can see there's damage in the knuckles. You can see here, it looks very, very painful. It can be quite debilitating. Simple tasks like doing up buttons or zippers can be very difficult for people with severe rheumatoid arthritis. Also on the list here, you can see I have uh, something called farmer's lung and lupus. Uh, again, I will not be going into these in any detail, uh, but know that they are immune system hypersensitivities. Fourth type are uh, cell-mediated hypersensitivities. These tend to be a little bit slower, just basically uh, based on the part of the immune system that is being activated. So some examples, you can see there are a whole bunch here. These are often called autoimmune diseases, but they include the tuberculosis test. So you probably had this uh, as entrance as a nursing student. You get the skin test, and then you get it checked out a day later. And so you can see there's the delay, the 12 to 24 hours. Notice we have things like Crohn's disease, multiple sclerosis, uh, type 1 diabetes. These are all considered autoimmune diseases where uh, various different types of tissues are being destroyed or damaged due to an immune reaction. So let's switch now and we're going to talk about immune deficiencies. Mostly we're going to be talking about HIV and AIDS, but I do want to talk about a couple other types of immune deficiencies for a minute. Uh, you can see the first group here are the primary immunodeficiencies. There are quite a variety of these uh, diseases. Most of them are genetic or developmental kind of uh, uh, disorders. The most famous type is called SCID. This is where uh, somebody actually has a genetic deficiency and they have no B or T cells, so no lymphocytes at all. Uh, these people are often called bubble boy uh, uh, syndrome where they have to live isolated. There have been at least a couple of movies made on, uh, on uh, children with these kind of diseases. They're put in isolation, so bubbles, and uh, because they're very successful with all sorts of uh, diseases. As I mentioned, they have a failure to produce lymphocytes. There are other uh, genetic disorders, usually not so severe, that uh, some people have that make them uh, genetically susceptible to certain types of infections. Uh, many of them go undiagnosed because our immune systems are usually very good at compensating. There's a lot of overlaps in what our immune system can do. Second type of immunodeficiency we're going to talk about are the acquired immunodeficiencies. So what are acquired immunodeficiencies? These are things that we pick up after we're born uh, for various reasons. Here are a list of causes. 
It means a malnutrition, severe stress, chronic disease, so diabetes and cancers and, and things like that. Uh, removal of the spleen, so that's a, a major place for the production of uh, various immune cells. Result of uh, some sort of uh, therapy. Uh, again, you need to be immunosuppressed because you have had a uh, lung transplant. And the one we're going to talk about here is infections that lead to this. So, for example, HIV and AIDS. Another one here that a lot of people aren't familiar with, though, is measles. Measles can actually really knock out your immune system and actually kills a lot of your memory cells, which is why it's a very serious disease to have. So let's talk about HIV and AIDS.